Hey everyone, it's Dr. Chris with Texas Cairo Health, back with our 12 minutes to health this week. Um, just wanted to take a quick second and say thank you for joining us each week to find out about the research on how to eat better and how to get more exercise and, and to reduce your stress and what that means for your health. So it means a lot to us that you guys tune in and I really appreciate it. You know, we do... We, we spend a lot of time doing this, me and the other doctors at Texas Cairo Health, finding the right research, uh, reading it, understanding it, analyzing it, talking about it so that we can bring you the, the best research, right? We, there's a lot of it that we read that we throw out because of either how they did it or it was just a, a case study and just one person was, you know, the subject of it. So we like to use the randomized control trials or the the systematic reviews of all the research that's out there so that we can give you the answers on how to be healthier and how to live a healthier lifestyle. So we put a lot of time into this and I just wanted to say thank you. We really appreciate you guys tuning in each time. So the study we're looking at today is, uh, it was done by Cohen et al. and it's called Psychological Stress and Susceptibility to the Common Cold. So basically what the authors were looking at here is if you're stressed out, does that make you more likely to get sick from the common cold viruses? The rhino, I think they use the rhinovirus or a couple different rhinoviruses, a coronavirus, uh, syncytial virus, and then they had a placebo in this study as well. They took 420 people and they broke them up into different groups. And first they had them fill out a survey on how psychologically stressed they were, right? What are their perceived stresses? What kind of tragic events have they had in their life? You know, what has led to them being stressed out and how stressed out are they from all this stuff? Uh, what they didn't look at is, you know, how are they moving and what are they eating, right? Because those can create stresses in our life as well. Uh, chemical stresses by putting the wrong things in our body or not getting enough of the right things, whatever it may be. And then physical stresses from just not getting enough exercise, whether that leads to pain and it always leads to degeneration. Um, so those stresses weren't assessed here because in research, we try to isolate things so that we can see what this effect is for just this one aspect of whatever we're looking at. So that's what they did. So they were looking at the psychological stresses and then they split them up into these different groups. And some people got viruses in their nose. They do like a little dropper and they expose them to one of the viruses. And some people got the placebo, which was just saline solution so that they can control it. They, they didn't want it to be the placebo effect, which you guys have all heard about. So, um, But what they found was that the more stressed out you are, the more susceptible you are to the common cold. And that's kind of the whole basis of the study. So if you turn this off right now, that's cool. Just understand that your stress is affecting your health, right? Because it's, um, it's one of the harder ones to get is that stress can have the effect it has on our health. But a lot of research is coming out saying it may be the biggest effect on our health is how stressed out we are all the time. So this is just another study that was looking at that. Uh, but this is a really good study that they used a placebo and they blinded everybody so you didn't know what you were getting. And they were able to evaluate your stress levels and how that went for you. What they found was that there's a dose response. All right. Oh, excuse me. So there's a dose response. And all that means is that the more your stress levels were, the higher your stress is, then the more susceptible you were to getting sick, right? They had a range from like 74 to 90%. Like when you were exposed to the virus that you got sick, some people didn't get sick. And what they said was that those that didn't get sick had much lower stress levels, right? So that's a big deal because a lot of us are chronically stressed out right now. And that's, that's a new term that's kind of come out in the research is chronic stress, not just like the, you know, the car accident stress that you, you get over in a couple of days because you're resilient, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Um, but the chronic stress, just the, I am stressed all day, every day. It's work, it's family life, it's personal stuff. You know, it is what it is, but it's causing all this stress. And the more stress that we have, that chronic stress as it climbs, the more our immune system is being affected and the more susceptible we are to these colds. And that's just, this is just another example of that. I mentioned the immune system. Your immune response is directly affected by the amount of stress that you have. I've done talks in the past about how your immune system doesn't do as well if you don't have the right nutrients. I've done on omega-3s, probiotics, vitamin D, vitamin A, you know, all the stuff that we talk to you about all the time. But if you're putting the wrong stuff in your body, your immune system is down-regulated, like I've mentioned. And that makes sense to people. So does exercise. But when it comes to stress, 
people, there's some confusion. It's, it's hard to connect those dots. And that's why I think this is such an important piece of research. But what we notice is the higher your stress levels are again, the weaker your immune system is, right? It's down-regulated. It's just, it's not doing what it needs to do. It's just like not having enough vitamin D, like I just mentioned. Your immune system does not work the same if you're chronic, chronically stressed out. Now, the article goes into why that is a little bit. One of the interesting things that I saw was that the more stressed out you are, the more likely you are to practice poor lifestyle habits, right? Like, so the more stress, the more cigarette smoking they saw, or the more alcohol consumption or drug use that was causing a down regulation of the immune system along with the stress, right? So now, and, and they corrected for all those things in the study so that they could just isolate the stress, but they did point that out that stress also causes you to have more bad lifestyle habits, which is also gonna weaken your immune system. And that's huge because we're all facing stress and we all need to understand that if we let that stress affect us as much as we have, um, it's going to affect our immune system and we're going to be sick because of it. We're going to develop chronic disease because we're going to increase our inflammation. We're going to develop poor lifestyle habits. We're not going to you know, move as much. They showed that people that exercise are less stressed. And that, again, is because of the different hormones and things that play in there that are released during um, exercise are kind of defending against the stress hormones that are being released. So all of it very, very important to us being healthy. But again, the bottom line is the more stressed out we are, the more likely we are to be sick because we're exposed to these viruses and bacteria and different things all the time. And we've got to do as much as we can to build our body's defenses against that. And that's why we constantly talk to you guys about eating better, moving more, and stressing, managing your stress at a better level, right? And that's what this is about. Daily psychological fitness is a big deal and a lot of us don't practice it because we don't draw these lines like we do with exercise. Fitness we get, we know we need to go for a walk, we need to work out, lift weights, you know, whatever it may be, we've gotta get exercise in. But when it comes to psychological fitness, we don't always have the resilience that we should. And what I mean by resilience is the fact that Stress is going to happen. I mean, we can't avoid it, right? We're going to lose loved ones and, and friends and family. We're going to have accidents. There's tragic things that just happen. But how do we bounce back from that? And on a daily level, you know, we, we all have, you know, friends, family, coworkers, work itself. There's stuff happens. Life is stressful at times. You know, and we have those thoughts of, you know, did I forget to do something? Is this person okay? What's going on? But are we resilient to that stuff? Do we, do we take the time to, I guess, you know, relax, um, <laughs> just take a breath, lay down for a little bit, go for a walk, get out in nature, right? I just read a really cool study, which I'll be going to talk about sometime here soon, um, on being in nature and what kind of effect that has on your stress levels at a physiological level, like the hormones that are released by just being in nature and what that means for chronic disease and things like that looking forward. So um, very cool to get out in nature, but all of it helps us build this resilience. It lets us decompress and let go of some of this stuff because we understand that these things are going to happen and yeah, they suck and we can be sad, we can be frustrated, we can be angry. It's okay. It's, it's a normal response to have. We just can't hold on to it forever if we're going to reduce our stress and thereby boost our immune system and boost our health overall. So some of the things that we talk a lot about are gratitude is a big one for us. Um, at Texas Chiral Health, we, we help our patients understand gratitude. Um, most of them have a gratitude journal at some point because it really makes a big difference to just write down and think about what you're thankful for. It's on a hormonal chemical level in your body. It makes a huge difference to just be thankful. All right. So one, what I try to do is I try to write down two or three things in my book that I'm happy about from the day. I do it at night. You can do it in the morning. You can do it whenever as long as you're doing it. Um, 
I write them down at night before I go to bed and I just try to smile and say thank you. And it doesn't have to be life altering things, right? Some days they're just normal and, and, and bad things didn't happen. And I can point that out, right? Sometimes great things happen and I'm thankful for that and that goes in there too. But just even if it's something very, very small, like the dishes were done when I got home, I was thankful for that. Like that has a big effect on our immune system, on our overall health, on our resilience and just letting go of the stresses that we face all the time. So big deal. Uh, the gratitude journal is a great thing. And guys, even if you don't write it down, if you just think it and, and smile and just have that kind of dopamine release about being thankful, it makes a big deal to your uh, system and everything else. So another thing I like to do is, uh, like I talked about, I like to get out in nature. And it's kind of my form of meditation. I've never been really good at just sitting down and shutting off my mind. Um, it's hard. Like I make it about four seconds, I think, and then something pops in there, which, you know, I've had people tell me that's okay. Just acknowledge it and let it go. And, and I do, and it's just difficult. Right. And I work at it because I know it's important, but, um, the nature thing is, is much better for me. I like to get out and walk. Um, I like to play golf, right? It's, it's a form of relaxation for me and I'm out in nature and I just feel better after I do it because I don't think about everything else. Um, and you can do it with anything. Uh, you can, you know, I told my friends I'm on a bowling team. I said, joining a bowling team actually helps your stress levels. We're actually getting healthier here. So it's just kind of a joke, but it's true at the same time. Being a part of a club or an organization or a team or anything like that, where you can connect with people and just kind of think about something else instead of just your stresses for a little while, it's a big deal when we look at resilience, when we look at being exposed to these common colds and our susceptibility to them. So, you know, get out there and try to do something you enjoy, something that takes your mind off things for a little while. I know it's not always easy. Hopefully these 12 minutes to health when you join in, you know, that uh, that can be stress relieving because you get an understanding. You, you learn more about the research and how things are affecting you and it gives you a little bit of peace of mind. So um, I encourage you guys as always to join us in the office Tuesday nights. We do these at 515. I know I've given you guys all kinds of different times, but it is 515 that we start the talks. Um, and you get to meet the doctors and be in there and see what the clinic's all about. Actually grab the research so you can read it for yourself um, and just gain more peace of mind and more information about how to be healthy. And that can help build your resilience like we're talking about here. So, you know, at, at the end of this, it's a really cool study because like I said in the beginning, if you're more stressed out, you are more likely to get sick. So if we can lower that stress, we'll be less likely to get sick. It's something that's inside our control. We've just got to put in the work and do in the psychological fitness. So um, if you guys, you know, I know some of you guys come into the clinic that are watching. Some of you haven't been into the clinic, but this is the kind of stuff that we help with. It's why we do these 12 minutes to health. We want to meet more people and we just want people to be healthier. So it helps us get the word out there by having patients watch this stuff and then let other people know. So if you're not a patient, you've thought about coming in, um, you're dealing with something, whatever it may be, if it's uh, health related, we'll help you out, right? We just do our $39 donation. That's just from you guys to our local monthly charity. And it gives us a chance to, you know, sit down and talk with you, have a consultation, see what's going on, put you through an exam. We use a proprietary health software. Um, that's what the spinal health assessment is. And it just looks at your overall lifestyle and how and gives us a health score from one to a hundred and it shows us what we can do to help you guys out and how we can start to make changes to get you healthier or out of pain or or just moving better and living healthy whatever it is that you need we do the exam with it um, any x-rays that we need to that's all included in the 39 dollars guys but most importantly it helps us get the word out it helps us meet more people so that we can help educate the community that we live in about how to be healthier. And we base all that stuff off the research, as you guys know, because I talk about it each week. But thanks again for joining us, guys. I'll be back next week with the 12 Minutes to Health, and uh, we'll see you then. Thanks.